All right, hello everybody. I am back um, with a, another response, and this response is going to be for uh, G Marcos. Um, put up here, hello sir. I have been viewing your YouTube videos and want to give you a big up. I appreciate that. Uh, on the content you are putting out, definitely appreciate that, sir. Uh, so you say you have two questions. One question is, do you receive a BOL at each pickup location? Um, and the other is for a non CDL setup with a Ram 2500 with a GVWR of 10,000 and a two car hauler with either a GVWR of 12K or 14K, uh, be suitable to stay under 26. So for your first question, uh, as far as the BOLs, uh, in these situations right here, most times the BOLs is going to be different when you're dealing with vehicles. Uh, most companies are not going to provide you with a BOL um, unless you're dealing with one of the bigger companies of uh, like <coughs> uh, Assertus. Uh, Assertus has their own BOL set up through a app called Velocity Carrier. Um, it's a terrible app, I will say, uh, because half the time when you're trying to use it, uh, it doesn't work properly. Uh, but Assertus has their own uh, BOL. If you do United Road, United Road has their own uh, app that you do a BOL on. Um, I forget what it's called. Um, let me see if I can see what that's called. Uh, yeah, Magnus Driver would be the one for United Road. If you go with a company like Run Buggy, Run Buggy has their own BOL um, uh, system that you'll use. Auto Sled, they have their own BOL. So some of their bigger companies, a lot of your bigger companies are going to have their own BOL setups. Um, if you're using Super Dispatch or one of the companies that you're taking uh, shipments for its own super dispatch, then they will have their own BOL set up as well. Um, but for uh, the companies that you may pull for that does not have a BOL, you can do a paper BOL. I would not recommend it because you will have to have um, that paper BOL with you and print it out everywhere you go and all that type of stuff. What I would recommend for you uh, for the BOLs is to use this. Uh, site right here, which is ship.cars. You can get signed up for it for carriers. It's free um, and um, You know, they got the dashboard they got all orders trips uh, Archives you can you know see where your uh, You can send out invoices from this one. I mean your contact books where you have all the different uh, contacts of uh, The companies that you hold for before they're saving under your contact list um, and, uh, that's for your business contacts. And if you have personal contacts up there as well, um, you know, you can have your user set up, um, you know, alerts and so on and so on. But <clears throat> here's the main part of it for the BOL. You go right here to where it says create order. Um, you know, you put your load ID in, then, uh, your VIN number and all that kind of stuff, uh, what type of vehicle it is. Um, most times if you put the VIN number in, it'll auto populate the rest of this information. You put your pickup delivery, uh, your payment, your shipper, most situations, your dispatcher, uh, if you have a dispatcher, will be doing this, or you can do it before you ever go pick up the car and you'll go to create order. Once you create this order, uh, ship.cars also has an app. You can go on the app and from there, uh, you can go through the process of doing the BOL uh, electronic. You can get the signatures electronic. Um, the pictures are dated and time stamped uh, and so on and so on. So ship that cars is a pretty good system. And, you know, if you're out there hauling cars, it'd be the best system, in my opinion, to use to do your BOLs. Now, in the freight world, uh, most situations with BOLs, you're actually sent um a uh you might be sent a copy of some paperwork like your rate con and so on and so on from the uh broker but when you get on location in most situations they'll have paperwork there for you already um uh a bol there for you that they'll give you a copy of uh with signatures on it and you get it signed at the drop off location so picking up bols at each stop no you won't be doing that you'll be creating your own unless that company 
uh, already has a BOL for you to use. And even then, in the many cases, like for velocity carriers, um, most times when you pull up that app, again, that's for a service, it's a crappy app. You can look at the reviews on it. Uh, and the same thing for Magnus Driver. Uh, most times I just went on to use ship.cars anyway. A lot of them will say, hey, you can't use your own BOLs, but hey, if you're out there and their app is not working, you have no choice but to have a BOL. Um, I get on ship.cars and I, I do it in a heartbeat. So that's for the BOL uh, question. Those you'll be creating on your own. Uh, and then for this part right here, uh, do you receive, uh, give me one second. My dog is still in my water. Oh, water here, baby. Um, for your second question about the uh, GVWR, so with your RAM 2500, um, in most cases, your RAM 2500, uh, this is an example of how your sticker may look uh, possible, uh, unless it's an older vehicle. RAM 2500, in the most cases, is going to have, like you're seeing, 10,000 pounds, um, you know, People get this weight thing wrong all the time, man, and you have to be careful with it. Uh, what you are planning on doing seems to be, not seems to be, but I know it is okay. Because, you know, the main thing is for non-CDL, you have to stay under this 26,000 pounds. Um, so 10,000 and 12,000, you'll be at 22,000. At 10 and 14, you'll be at uh, 24,000. So you can actually have your trailer sitting at 16,000 uh, pounds um, with a Ram 2500 and still be good uh, because your Ram 6500 GBWR is only 10,000 pounds. Uh, I think in most cases, uh, that's what I've seen. Um, now you have to be careful just because you have it rated at 22, 24, uh, thousand pounds, or if you have it at, at your trailer at 16,000 pounds, um, that'd be the 26 mark. Uh, you still have to be careful because that does not mean that you can carry all that weight on a 2,500. So, you know, along with telling you, yes, that would be okay. I also want to let you know that you have to be careful because many people again get the weights confused and i'm going to explain it right here when you go to a weight station dot is looking at three weights when you get on that scale you got um your front axle um right there i have a ram for uh 3500 so the main gbwr for the uh, vehicle is 14,000 pounds right so when you get on the scale, they're going to be looking at this front axle uh, for my truck is 6,000 pounds. Uh, your rear axle, which is uh, 9750 uh, for my truck, right? And then they're also going to be looking at your trailer axle, uh, axle weights, because your, the scale is broken down into three, uh, three different sections. Uh, so if you're non CDL, all three of those sections have to come either 26,000 and under, uh, not either, but that has to be under 26, uh, 20, it has to be 26,000 and under um, for all three sections of that. So, you know, if your front axle is this, your rear axle is that, and your trailer axle is this, it has to equal 26,000 pounds or less for you to be considered as non CDL. Um, that, those are the main things that they're looking at. Some people get into the thing of where it says, hey, if you're carrying a trailer, uh, I think in a combination and it's 10,000 or more pounds or something like that, they say you have to have a CDL and so on and so on. Uh, I've been through many weight stations. Uh, I've been stopped by DOT. I've been weighed many times, um, you know, and my truck was 14,000 pounds. Uh, my trailer was at 12,000 pounds. Um, you know, and that was when I didn't have a CDL. None of those weight stations, uh, from state to state, uh, from place to place, North Carolina, uh, all the way out towards New Mexico, Arizona, uh, running through all those different states at any weight station. I stopped that. None of them ever said, Hey, your trailer is over 10,000 pounds. Your truck uh, is at 14,000. You need a CDL. Nope. They look at those three numbers. If they're 26 and under, you're good to go. If it's more than 26, you got a problem. You need a CDL for that. Uh, so 26,001 pounds, you got to have a CDL. Uh, so 
you know, one thing that you have to be careful on with the 2500 is you can't carry as much weight as a 3500. Uh, and the reason why is because this is would be your main problem. On uh, no, the 2500, I think this number is 68, uh, so around about 6800. So when you're loading your Trello up, um, you know, you have to be careful what vehicle you put on the front or where you, you know, what weight you put on the front because that weight is going to transfer to your, uh, uh, truck, uh, obviously, and mainly it's going to transfer to that rear axle. So, you know, I've seen times where, uh, my buddy, when he got started, uh, we went out, we put a, uh, truck, not, um, a F-150, uh, was on the front of his uh, trailer, and he had a, a 2013 F-250, um, and it was rated at 10,000 pounds of GBWR. So he had a F-150 on the front of the trailer, and he put a it was a Dodge Charger Hellcat on the back of the truck. Now, with the weight of both of those, he should have been good as far as the you know staying under CDL. Uh, but while we was out there and we picked them up from Mannheim in Kenley, North Carolina, um, I told them, hey, um, matter of fact, we picked one up from Greenville Auto Auction here in Greenville and then from Kenley. The, we went to the scales, told them, let's go to the scales, let's check it out. Uh, so when we did it, he was overweight on that rear axle. He was good as far as the 26 was concerned, uh, but he was overweight on that rear axle. So what we had to do was take that truck uh off and the hellcat off had to put that uh hellcat in the front and had to put the truck in the back um and then get back on the scale and once we did it it readjusted those numbers so that he was good on the rear he was good on the front and so that he was good on the trailer axle so you know be mindful of that when you uh are loading up if you have that 2500 although you can have your trailer at 16, although your truck is at 10, and you can have the trailer at 16, although your truck is at 10, and you may have your trailer at 14, you still have to be careful what weight you put on that rear axle because you go on the scale and you tell the man that, hey, I'm under 26, but he's saying you're overweight on your rear axle. You know, he can still give you a ticket for it. He can put you out of service for it, put you on the side of the road and all that type of stuff like that. So you do absolutely have to be careful about what's on that rear axle uh, as well as the front. But your rear axle is going to be affected a little bit more uh, than your front axle uh, as far as the weight that's being transferred uh, from the trailer uh, to the truck. So as far as your question is concerned, you would definitely be good um at 12,000 14,000 or 16,000 pounds for the trailer if your truck is only at 10 as long as it's uh 26 and under you're good to go um so one other thing i would mention uh is you also have to be careful this is a sample of a north carolina registration car uh so one thing that a lot of guys are doing is uh, getting the truck trailer, they got the business register and so on and so on, um, and they forget to get their declared weight adjusted uh, on their registration card. My buddy came to me this week and he ended up getting a ticket um, and he's hoping he'll be able to get it weighed, but it's a $1,200 ticket that he got because he was uh, loaded and um, he was good as far as being under 26 because he's doing non CDL. But he was loaded, and by him being loaded, he never changed his declared weight. Uh, so I think he said he, the guy told him he was a total of, um, and he drives a Ford uh, F350. I think the guy told him he was over a total of 10 or 12,000 pounds. Um, and the reason why is because he never changed his declared weight. He was under 26, but he never changed his declared weight. Most times your declare weight will show up right here where it says gross weight. Um, as far as your truck is concerned, you have to go to DMV and actually take this weight up. I know it's that way in North Carolina. I'm not sure about other states. You'll have to check your own state laws. But in North Carolina, I know you'll have to um, go to DMV, check, uh, let them know that you want to take your declare weight up. 
and uh, you could take it up to whatever you want to. But if you're not see the elves, you're going to have to hit that 26 and stay there. Uh, I think for my truck, uh, my registration card, I think I got it registered at 45,000 pounds. Uh, but anything over 26, you got to go to the IRP office anyway um, to get uh, different plates for your vehicle and so on and so on because, and pay uh, for yeah, the weight and pay to be able to run through states and so on and so on. So make sure you change that declare weight. If you don't change that declare weight, you go through a weight station and that number up there says 10,000. Uh, that's going to match your GBWR on your truck. If you're out there and you got 26,000 pounds on and this declare weight says 10,000, that means you're 16,000 pounds overweight. Um, and believe me, they're going to give you a ticket for it. They're going to put you out of service. They're going to put you on the side of the road and so on and so on because you have to have that declare weight change. That's if you get the wrong one. Some of them are pretty cool and, um, you know, some of them will let you get away with a few things because they know it's a mistake and so on and so on. Uh, but, you know, in the travel world, transportation world, ignorance is not a excuse is what they say. So make sure you go get that declare weight change if you haven't done it already. Uh, because it can definitely hem you up. Uh, so, um, G. Marcos, I hope that answers your question. Um, BOLs get on ship cars unless you're using the big brokers. Um, they're going to have their own, or you can create your own BOLs electronic, and that's the same thing. Even if you have drivers and so on and so on, uh, you can get on ship cars. You can create BOLs and you can send it out to a, a specific driver if you want to. Um, and they can you know, go to their phones and so on and so on. They'll be able to act accordingly. And, um, you know, as far as your GBWR on your truck, you'll be okay at 12, 14, or 16. As long as you don't go over that 26,000 pounds, you'll be good to go. Um, and make sure you get your declare weight change if you haven't done it already. So I hope that answers your questions. And uh, that's going to be it for this one. Uh, until the next one, catch y'all later. Bye-bye.